Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in d and I'm Dragonfly9078, and today I'm building Raven Cronwell from Elsword. First, a bit of background. Raven was the captain of a group of well-known mercenary knights, but since he was a commoner, some jealous nobles took exception to him and destroyed his life. Thanks to the Nassauds, he got a new lease on life and a snazzy new arm, and swore revenge on the kingdom, though he'd later regret that and join Elsword to redeem himself. So, what do we want from this build? Well, in the game, Raven has a couple of different job paths, but my understanding is that the one that's considered to be canon is the Rage Hearts path, where he learns to coexist with his Nassad arm. So we'll need to harness our burning inner rage. We also need a Nassad core, a little floaty thing containing the Nassad's consciousness that follows us around and helps us during combat. And we need our fighting skills, from our fiery outbursts to our dashing and ground smashing attacks. Looking over at ability scores, I'll be using the standard point array. If you want to roll for stats, that's fine, just make sure your wisdom is high enough to multi-class. Strength is number one. Maybe the Furious Blade path would use Dexterity to attack, but that's not us. So Dexterity can be 13. We tend to just brute force our way through fights. Which means we should make Constitution 14 so we can take a couple of hits. We'll dump Intelligence, since we don't really need it for anything, and make Wisdom 12. This version of Raven was able to accept and live with his Nassad arm, instead of trying to suppress or weaken it or use it as a weapon. Which says Wisdom to me. Then we'll finish off with a 10 in Charisma. We're a scary edgelord looking guy, but we did lead a mercenary band in the past, so it kind of evens out. Raven is a human, enhanced with a cyborg arm, so a variant human it is. We get plus one to our strength and wisdom, proficiency in perception, and the savage attacker feat, which lets us reroll our melee weapon damage once per turn and use either result. Our rage is lessened and we can control ourselves for the most part, but it's definitely still there. We used to lead a band of mercenary knights, so mercenary veteran seems fitting for our background, giving us proficiency in athletics and persuasion. We'll start off as a cleric. Yes, I said cleric. But wait, I hear you cry. He uses his rage to fight. Doesn't that make him a barbarian? Yeah, that's one way to look at it. But remember that this is a raven who has mastered his rage. It doesn't control him. He doesn't go into a frenzy or anything like that. Also, we need a bunch of spells, which barbarians are extremely bad at. So, yeah, cleric. Being a cleric gives us proficiency in insight and medicine, both of which would have come in handy as a mercenary knight captain. We'll specifically be a cleric of the Zeal Domain, which gives us bonus proficiencies with heavy armor and all martial weapons, and also makes us a priest of zeal. Number of times per day equal to our wisdom modifier when we take the attack action, we can make a weapon attack as a bonus action. For cantrips, light makes an object glow, sacred flame drops fire on an enemy, ignoring cover and dealing up to 4d8 radiant damage on the failed dexterity save, and Word of Radiance makes us erupt with burning light, dealing up to 4d6 radiant damage to any creatures within 5 feet if they fail a constitution save. We can pick up Shield of Faith, boosting our AC by 2 for up to 10 minutes with our concentration, and the Zeal Domain gives us Searing Smite and Thunderous Smite. Both work in the same way, casting as a bonus action, then delivering an effect the first time we hit with a melee weapon attack while the spell is active. Searing Smite deals an extra 1d6 fire damage and sets the target on fire, dealing an additional d6 of fire damage each turn until they either pass a constitution save or extinguish the flames in some other way. Thunderous Smite deals an extra 2d6 thunder damage, and the target has to make its strength save or be pushed 10 feet back and knocked prone. Second level clerics can channel divinity once per rest. All clerics can turn undead, forcing undead in a 30 foot radius to make a wisdom save or run away from us for up to a minute, and zeal clerics get consuming fervor. When we roll thunder or fire damage, we can use our channel divinity to just deal maximum damage instead of roll. Our domain spells at second level are magic weapon, which makes a non-magical weapon into a plus one weapon for up to an hour, and shatter, which deals 3d8 thunder damage to any creatures or objects in a 10 foot radius around a point we choose if they fail a constitution save, half damage on a success. If the creature happens to be made of rock or crystal, you know, something inorganic, they have disadvantage on the save. We can also pick up Borrowed Knowledge to help ourselves to our Nassad skills for an hour, giving us proficiency with one skill of our choice. And Warding Bond, a tricky little spell that gives a target we touch plus one to their AC and all their saving throws, as well as resistance to all damage, but makes it so any damage they take is also dealt to us. It effectively lets us split any damage they take between them and us. Not super useful at the moment, but we'll make better use of it later. Raven has a couple of skills where he dashes in and attacks, so we'll grab the Charger Feet. When we take the dash action, we can make a melee attack or try to shove a creature as a bonus action. If we move at least 10 feet in a straight line beforehand, we get plus 5 to the attack's damage, or we shove the creature an additional 10 feet. We get another cantrip at this level too, but none of the cleric cantrips really grab me, so just take Mending, I guess, or Thaumaturgy, that's a good role-playing option. 
At 5th level, any undead of CR 1 half or less who fail their save against our turn undead are automatically destroyed. And for domain spells, Fireball forces a dexterity save on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing 8d6 damage on a fail, half on a success. And Haste doubles our speed, gives us plus 2 to our AC and dexterity saves, and lets us take an additional action each turn to make an attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an item. Though once the spell ends, we have to take a turn off. We can also take protection from energy to get resistance to our choice of acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage. At 6th level, we can use our channel divinity twice between rests, and since we're a zeal cleric, we get resounding strike. Whenever we deal thunder damage to a larger, smaller creature, we can push it back 10 feet. No save, it just is automatically pushed. The only 4th level spell I really care about here is Fire Shield from our domain. For 10 minutes, we're surrounded by flames, giving us resistance to cold damage, and whenever a creature within 5 feet hits us with a melee attack, they take 2d8 fire damage. There's also a Chill Shield version that gives us resistance to fire and deals cold damage, but the Zeal Domain actually only allows for casting the Warm Shield version. We do get freedom of movement as well, letting us ignore difficult terrain, as well as any magical effects that would paralyze us, restrain us, or otherwise reduce our speed, along with letting us spend 5 feet of movement to escape from non-magical restraints. Our turn undead can destroy undead up to CR1 at 8th level. Divine Strike lets us add an additional 1d8 to our weapon damage once per turn, and we'll pick up Fey Touched. That'll round off our Wisdom to 14, give us our Shadow Step skill with Misty Step, and let us pick a first level Divination or Enchantment spell, I'm going to say Hunter's Mark, to deal additional damage to our target and get advantage on checks made to track them. We can cast both Misty Step and Hunter's Mark for free once per day, and using spell slots as normal afterward. Our last set of Domain spells are both big AoE damage spells. Destructive Wave smashes the ground, forcing creatures of our choice within 30 feet of us to make a constitution save. If they fail, they take 5d6 thunder damage and 5d6 of our choice of radiant or necrotic damage, and are knocked prone. Half damage and no knockdown on a success. And Flame Strike brings a column of nuclear fire roaring down in a 10-foot radius, 40-foot high cylinder within 60 feet of us. Creatures in the area make a dexterity save or take 4d6 fire and 4d6 radiant damage, again, half on a success. I think we're about done with Cleric for now, so we'll hop over to Druid, giving us the secret Druid language and access to a bunch more spells. Primal Savagery lets us make a melee claw spell attack that deals up to 4d10 acid damage when we just have to take a swipe with our Nassau Claw. And Thunderclap slams the ground to deal up to 4d6 thunder damage to any creatures within 5 feet of us who fail a constitution save. Combine this with our Resounding Strike from the Zeal Domain, and we have an infinite source of 10-foot shoves. And do note that Resounding Strike isn't limited to one creature per turn. If we're surrounded, we can drop a thunderclap and push everyone back 10 feet, assuming they fail their save. We'll pick up Jump and Long Strider for some movement buffs and Thunder Wave, which blasts a 15-foot cube with thunderous force, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to every creature who fails a constitution save and pushing them back 10 feet, half damage and no pushing on a success. Again, Resounding Strike works with this, pushing them 20 feet if they fail and 10 feet on a success since they do still take the thunder damage. There's also Earth Tremor, a localized earthquake that deals 1d6 bludgeoning damage to all creatures in a 10-foot radius who fail a dexterity save, and also knocks them prone. Half damage and no knockdown on a success, of course. If any of the ground in the area is dirt or stone, it becomes difficult terrain and has to be cleared by hand. Second level druids can wild shape into beasts twice per rest, but we'll be using those wild shapes in another way by joining the Circle of Wildfire. As an action, we can expend a use of our wild shape to summon our wildfire spirit, this, of course, is our Nassad core. When the core appears, any creatures within 10 feet of it have to make a dexterity save or take 2d6 fire damage. The whole stat block is in Tasha's, I won't get into the whole thing here, but the core has a 30-foot fly speed, a ranged fire attack, and can teleport itself and a couple of others up to 15 feet while leaving a burst of fire behind it. We can use a bonus action on our turn to command it, and it sticks around for an hour or until it drops to 0 HP. Just like our domain, our circle gives us spells. Here we get Burning Hands, a 15-foot cone of fire that deals 3d6 fire damage on a failed dexterity save, half on a success, and Cure Wounds, which heals a creature we touch for 1d8 plus our Wisdom modifier. Our second level circle spells are Flaming Sphere, which summons a ball of fire that we can move around with our bonus action, and that deals 2d6 fire damage to any creature it runs into or who ends their turn within 5 feet of it if they fail a dexterity save, and Scorching Ring, which throws 3 burning spears at up to 3 targets, each one dealing 2d6 fire damage on a hit. Flame Blade summons a fiery sword into our hand that deals 3d6 fire damage on a hit, and Spike Growth sprouts a field of Nassau spikes in a 20-foot radius area, making it difficult terrain and dealing 2d4 piercing damage to any creature that moves 5 feet in it. At 4th level, our Wild Shape options expand, but we really don't care about that, so we'll just bump our strength up to 18 and pick up Produce Flame, 
letting us conjure a Torch Flame in our hand and throw it as a ranged spell attack that deals up to 4d8 fire damage. Our third level circle spells are not especially in character for Raven. Uh, we get Plant Growth and Revivify because the Wildfire Circle has kind of a theme of burning down and renewing, but we can pick up Elemental Weapon and Erupting Earth. Elemental Weapon makes our sword a plus one weapon that deals an extra 1d4 of our choice of Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Thunder damage. Fire is probably the most in-character option for us, but Thunder does work with our Resounding Strike, so it's not a bad choice. And Erupting Earth makes the ground in a 20-foot cube explode, making the area difficult terrain and dealing 3d12 bludgeoning damage to any creatures in the area who fail a dexterity save. Half out of success. Sixth level Circle of Wildfire Druids have an Enhanced Bond, adding a d8 to one roll of any fire damage or healing rolls for spells we cast while our core is summoned. Also, any spells we cast that don't have a range of self can come from our core instead. Now, this might be a DM call, but you might be able to use this with Warding Bond from our Cleric levels. Have the spell originate from the core and have us be the target so that we get the extra AC, saving throw bonus, and damage resistance. That probably isn't how it technically works by the rules. It probably still is us casting the spell, so we probably can't target ourselves. But I don't think it really breaks anything. And if your DM doesn't agree, then hey, at least you can still use Warding Bond to give the bonuses to your core to keep them safe. They're comparatively much easier to kill than we are anyway. At 7th level, we get Fire Shield from our circle. It works just like it did when we got it from the Zeal Domain, but this time we can actually use the Chill Shield too. We also get Aura of Life, which gives us and any allies within 30 feet resistance to necrotic damage and immunity to maximum HP reduction. It also automatically restores any allies to 1 HP if they start their turn at 0 and they're inside the radius of the aura. Druids have access to Wall of Fire as well, summoning a straight or ringed wall that's 20 feet high and radiates heat on one side. Any creatures in the area when it's summoned make a dexterity save or take 5d8 fire damage, half on a success, and any creature who ends their turn within 10 feet of the side that radiates heat, or who enters the wall itself, takes the same 5d8 damage with no save allowed. Our wild shape improves again at 8th level, but again, we don't care, so we'll use our last ASI to boost our wisdom to 16. Our last two circle spells are Flame Strike, which we already had of course, and Mass Cure Wounds which heals up to 6 creatures in a 30-foot radius around what point we choose, for 3d8 plus our Wisdom modifier HP. 10th level Wildfire Druids get Cauterizing Flames. Whenever a small or larger creature dies within 30 feet of us or our core, a harmless flame appears in their space. A number of times per day equal to our proficiency, when a creature enters that space, we can use our reaction to extinguish the flame and heal that creature for 2d10 plus our Wisdom modifier, or deal the same amount to them in fire damage. And just to stay on theme, we'll make our last cantrip, Create Bonfire, making a 5-foot cube of fire that deals up to 4d8 fire damage to any creature who passes through it and fails a dexterity save. Our capstone is the 11th level of Druid for 6th level spells. Bones of the Earth causes 6 pillars of stone to burst from the ground. The pillars are 5 feet across and 30 feet high. Any creature on one of the pillars when it appears can make a dexterity save to jump off before they lift it up, and a creature who doesn't can be slammed between the pillar and a low enough ceiling taking 6d6 bludgeoning damage and being restrained until they make a strength or dexterity check to free themselves. And Wall of Thorns makes a wall that is either 60 feet long and 10 feet high, or a 20-foot ring that's 20 feet high. Any creature in the wall's area when it appears makes a dexterity save or takes 7d8 piercing damage, half on a success, and any creature trying to move through the wall uses 4 feet of movement for every feet they move, and when they enter or end their turn in the wall, they take 7d8 slashing damage, again half on a successful dexterity save. Now that the build is complete, the question becomes, how good is it? Well, we're real good at shoving creatures thanks to our resounding strike, and our druid spells give us plenty of things to set up that will hurt to be pushed into, like Wall of Thorns, Wall of Fire, and Spike Growth, not even to mention ways to knock creatures prone. We also have solid healing options to stretch our 130 or so HP, and if push comes to shove, we have access to Revivify to heal a dead teammate. And this is a little understated since we only got to 6 level spells, but Despite the multiclass, we are in fact a 20th level caster, so we do have the full complement of spell slots to upcast our spells with, all the way up to 9th level. On the other hand, our bonus action is pretty crowded, between commanding our Nassad core, our Priest of Zeal extra attacks, and all of our bonus action spells. We also have a lot of spells that rely on our concentration, including most of our good field hazards and both of our smites. And finally, the vast majority of our spells target either dexterity or constitution, which are very common save proficiencies, and many deal fire damage, which is very commonly resisted. So we could run into some creatures that just don't care about our spells at all. 
I have to admit, when I first started doing research for this build, I was assuming he'd be a barbarian from the description I had of him. And I was also struck by his similarities to Velvet Crow, who I also did a build on. But he ended up being very different from both my preconceptions, and I like how this build turned out. I think his fiery passion can drive him to do very well in any campaign. Though be careful or you might burn out. I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any feedback or suggestions for characters you'd like to see me build, please leave them in the comments below. Leave a like or subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support what I'm doing here, you can check the description for the link to my Patreon. For access to the Discord channel, early access to future builds, and exclusive Patreon content. Thank you for watching, friends. I will see y'all later.